Today's episode is brought to you by Finbyte Insights. So this Finbyte Insight is started by Elvin, and that's me. And each day, I will articulate my thoughts about the financial markets. Just by reading it in less than three minutes, you will be able to get a very good understanding about what's going on, what's the most important thing that you need to know about the financial markets for that day, and how do you interpret it so that you can make better investment decisions out of it. So do remember to go to finbyteinsights.substack.com and you can subscribe it for free. Start enjoying the daily insights that I'll deliver it to your inbox. Hi there, this is Alvin from Dr. Wealth. So we just saw the news that Micron has been banned in China for supplying chips to infrastructure companies. So I thought that that would be a bad thing for Micron and we should see the share price coming down. But to my surprise was that Micron share price just dipped around 3% yesterday after the news has been released. So I don't think that's a very big impact. The reason is because the ban is limited to infrastructure companies and that means that other private companies or other state-owned enterprises that are less politically sensitive would still be able to buy chips from Micron. So I don't think that Micron is losing the entire China pie. Um, it's just probably a small percentage and that's why the share price didn't fall as much as I thought it should be. And this is a tit for tat kind of strategy, right? Because we know that the US have restricted China in terms of semiconductor access and now China has in turn banned a US company in this case, which is Micron, from supplying chips to their more sensitive infrastructure companies. And this tit for tat strategy has been proven to be very effective based on this guy that's shown in the picture here. Uh, his professor Robert Axelrod. So in the 80s, what he did was he started a game theory tournament to see what is the best kind of strategy against an adversary. And in most of the scenario, this tit for tat strategy came up ahead. So this tit for tat strategy is quite simple in the sense that you always play nice first, right? But once your adversary start to do something bad to you, you should mirror that bad action and deliver it back to the aggressor. So that is the tit for tat strategy. It is most often the best strategy to take. So we should see a lot more of this ding dong responses, policy responses between US and China in the near future as well. So to explain a little bit further why this happens, right? So we're going to bring in this game theory and that this is a quadrant, right? Between fighting and backing down, okay? Whatever policies they are trying to do against each other, they will usually fall in one of these quadrant, right? So we can see that in the first quadrant, China, US fight, China fight. Uh, second quadrant, US fight, China back down. And the third one will be US back down, but China fight. And then the last one is both back down. Of course, we know that if both back down, it will be good for the rest of the world. It will be good for the economy. We can focus more on prosperity rather than all those petty fights. Okay, maybe to some, it's not petty, right? Because we are talking about <laughs> superpowers over here. So you can see in the quadrant, if they both back down, they each will gain like three points each. Okay. So if one side starts to fight, right? In this case, let's say US fight. Okay, and if China backs down, US gain 5 points and China gains 0. And vice versa, if China fights and US back down, China will get 5 points and US will get 0 points. So if you think about it, right, you will definitely fight because if you don't fight, you're going to get 0 points. Okay, so the Nash equilibrium in this case is you end up both fighting each other. So sometimes US gain 1 point, China gain another point when it comes with another policy. So this ding dong action is going to happen uh, in the near future. We will see a lot more this kind of tit for tat kind of approaches. So the next question is, will there be more US chip company being banned in China? So let's take a look and stock take of the US semiconductor stocks that have substantial revenue derived from China. So this is the at least you can see Qualcomm is at the top with 64% of its revenue derived from China. That is really a very big chunk. You should call yourself a China company rather than a US company, considering that majority of revenue doesn't come from the US. And Broadcom is at 35%, LAM Research is at 31%, KLA is at 29%, so and so forth, right? But we can see there is a large number of this biggest semiconductor companies in the world deriving at least 20% of their revenue from China. Even Micron in this list looks small with just a 17% revenue derivation from China. So I think if China going to ban more US chip company, it will definitely hurt uh, US a lot more in this case. But of course, we don't want that to happen. And I don't think in the near term, we will see more of this US chip 
companies being banned. Okay, I'll have my reasons and which I'm going to share with you. So the first thing is that we know that currently, even though there are this kind of trade war going on, cheap war going on, but the policies have been very measured. Okay, so for example, so when the US try to restrict China's access to semiconductor equipment, it is limited to the high-end ones, not really for the average chips that China is going to make, right? There's no restriction over there. So it's very targeted, very surgical in that policy. And it is more of to limit the China's progress, right? Especially in the high-end manufacturing ability. It will make them less advanced, whether be it military or technology applications. Okay, so that is the purpose. And at the same time, as we can see just now, a lot of these US chip companies derive a lot of revenue from China. So if US is just to ban every US chip company in China, there's going to be a lot of revenue loss. It doesn't make any financial sense at all. Right? So US still want the companies to make money from the largest chip market in the world, which is China in this case. There's just too much to give up. As for China case, you can see that even on the ban on Micron, it is limited to infrastructure company, very specific and very surgical again. So it's really a very tit for tat kind of response that we're seeing. No one is going overboard with the kind of bans that they are trying to impose, which shows some restraint, which is a good sign. We don't want them to really go into a full on war mode and that will be like World War Three for everyone. That is something that we definitely want to avoid. And it also doesn't make sense for China to ban all the US chip companies because it still requires that technology, right? Because, you, because China is not there yet in terms of chip manufacturing and production. And even for that matter, the skill may not be enough, even if they have the technology. So in the near term, I don't think China is ready to give up the US chip company's contribution to its industry. So in conclusion, I don't think that more bans will come anytime soon right but now the ball is back to the u.s court okay so it depends on what kind of policies that u.s is going to impose i believe it will come but i also believe that it will be very measured okay it is not going to be very overboard and again it's also likely that china will return the favor in an equivalent manner so uh, more bands will be get more bands, right? That is going to be like the political show that we're going to watch for many, many years to come. Uh, but lastly, let's say if you are still worried, right? If you're still worried, potentially there is a band that hurt one of your companies in the portfolio, the stock tank, and that is not a very good feeling. And if you can avoid it and you want to do an active approach, that is where you can think about decoupling your portfolio. And that means that if you have a US company that have substantial revenue derived from China, you might want to sell it, right? Just to avoid the risk altogether. Even though I think that uh, the policy is going to be measured, the impact is going to be limited as well. But let's say really, let's say you're really concerned and you don't want to deal with this political shit show, you want to get out of it. I think that is one way, right? And likewise, do not invest in China companies that have exposure to the US. One thing, one, one company I can think of is like PDD Holdings, which has a, a burgeoning e-commerce platform called Timo in US, right? So if that becomes a threat, US may also impose a ban, just like what they're trying to do to TikTok. So that would hurt the China company as well. So you just want to be sure that you can decouple the portfolio. Do not wait for US and China to come and decouple and hurt your portfolio. You can do it before they do it to you. How you gain some insights into this uh, micron ban and the chip industry, as well as the tit for tat strategy that US and China will be employing in the near future. So remember to give me a thumbs up for this video, subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss another one like this. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.